1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 12 through 13 says, So, if you think you are standing firm, be careful that you don't fall. No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. One of the dangers that lurks in the background for every believer is the element of backsliding. Backsliding is a silent process that takes place, and one needs to be on alert always to avoid this happening. Indeed, it is true we are sustained by grace, but the Bible tells us to be careful lest we still think we are still in good standing and fellowship with God. Sometimes you are left doing all the rituals, but the glory of God is departed. As a minister, I have seen church leaders backslide but are still in office. For example, living in adultery and still arguing and denying that they need to repent and be right with God. Many serving in the church are caught in this deception. Assistant pastors, church elders, church deacons, ordinary saints, just to name a few. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us lest we fall. We know that your grace is sufficient to keep us from falling, but your word tells us to be careful lest it happens to us. Because you are holy and righteous, the God of integrity in the scripture tells us that, according to Acts chapter 10 verse 34, God is no respecter of persons. Your integrity is highlighted in the following scenarios. True to your word, you are no respecter of persons. The Bible gives us the chosen race, children of God in the wilderness, as an example of backsliding. Let us look in scripture what they did and did not do. The scripture warns us in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 6, Now these things occurred as examples to keep us from setting our hearts on evil things as they did. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 7 says, Don't degrade yourselves by worshiping anything less than the living God as some of them did. Remember, it is written, The people sat down to eat and drink and then rose up and dance and play. What did they do? Let us find out. Here's the narration from Exodus 32. When the people realized Moses was taking a long time to return from his trek up the mountain, they got together and approached Aaron. So everyone took out their gold earrings and handed them over to Aaron. He collected the gold they brought and used a tool to fashion an idol in the shape of a calf. When the people saw the calf Aaron made, they were elated. When Aaron saw how the people responded, he built an altar in front of the golden calf. The narration is clear that we are backslidden when we worship something else. Once you and I begin to have no time for God, we are backslidden in our own way. Let us take heed or pay special attention. It may not be a golden calf indicated above, but let it be known that one's golden calf may be a car or cars, a house or houses, a man or woman, you heard me right, God wants to be the first, the primary, not the secondary thing. Money, in search of money. We may not have mentioned the thing that is taking center before the Lord, but your spirit bears witness as you listen or watch this video. Sports, sports, sports. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us lest we fall. We know that your grace is sufficient to keep us from falling, but your word tells us to be careful lest it happens to us. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 8 says, We must be careful not to engage in sexual sins as some of them did. In one day, 23,000 died because of sin. What did they do? Let us find out. Numbers chapter 25, verses 1 through 3 says, Now it happened that while God's children were biding its time at Shittim, on the edge of the wilderness near Jericho, some of the men got mixed up with Moabite women. They got friendly and had sexual relations. The Moabites invited these men to participate in Moabite religious rituals and worship of their gods. And God's people bound themselves to the deity Baal of Peor, which made the Eternal One furious at his people. Lord, have mercy upon me. Lord, have mercy upon us, lest we fall. We know that your grace is sufficient to keep us from falling, but your word tells us to be careful lest it happens to us. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 9 says, nor let us tempt Christ, as some of them also tempted, and were destroyed by serpents. What did they do? Let us find out. 
Exodus chapter 17 verse 2 says, Once again the people complained to Moses, Give us water to drink, we're thirsty. Why do you aim your complaints at me? Why are you testing the Eternal One? But the people were so thirsty for water, they complained to Moses and levied accusations against him. Why did you lead us out of Egypt? Was it to kill all of us, our children and livestock included, with this thirst? Moses had had enough of their complaints, so he cried out to the Eternal One, What am I supposed to do with these people and their relentless complaining? They are on the verge of stoning me. God, speaking, said to Moses, Here's what I want you to do. Go on ahead of the people and take some of the elders of Israel with you. Also, be sure to bring your shepherd's staff, the one with which you struck the Nile. I will be there when you arrive, standing at the rock of Horeb. I want you to strike the rock with your staff, and when you do, water will flow out of it so that everyone will have enough to drink. Brothers and sisters, let us not tempt Christ through our murmurings, lest we backslide. You and I have to desist from complaining or murmuring. Let us desist from the temptation of doubting God's presence in our lives. When we cannot find what we want to let us not level accusations against God, we set ourselves to fall. Lord, have mercy upon me. Lord, have mercy upon us lest we fall. We know that your grace is sufficient to keep us from falling, but your word tells us to be careful lest it happens to us. The prophet Habakkuk said that God's eyes are too pure to behold sin. God can never compromise his standard of holiness. Sin stands between the sinner and the loving God. Why will a person call God and yet not receive a response? It is the problem of sin. There is no doubt that the hands of God are not too short, that they cannot save. However, people still perish. It is true that God is not dull of hearing, yet many people's calls are disregarded by Him. The reason for all of these is that sin separates us from God. We limit the greatness of God when we begin to commit sins that will not allow Him to prove His awesomeness in our lives. Oswald Smith once said that it is either the Bible takes you from sinning or sin will stop you from studying it. Sinners will always be known to live their lives in isolation from God. No one will ever be bold to read and to study the Bible or to come to the presence of God with filthiness. Sin has a way of separating us from God. It is not the judgment of sin that separates a man from God. It is sin itself. Remember that God had not yet pronounced judgment against the sin of Adam and Eve before they hid themselves from His presence. Sin isolates us from divine presence. The effect of sin will be more grievous if after we have given our lives to Christ, we choose to sin willfully. Do you ever wish to enjoy a sweet fellowship with the Holy Spirit? Do you want to live close to the heart of God? Once you remove the barrier of sin, your access to God cannot be denied. You may find it hard to believe this, but that's just the truth. He loves you and wants to associate closely with you. Just as God kept forgiving the people of Israel despite their backsliding, He also is willing to forgive us. Unlike the real world, God has unlimited forgiveness cards to give away. All we have to do is ask for them. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 1 John 1, 8-9 For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. He that believeth on Him is not condemned, 
But he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. John 3, 16-18